Hello everyone and welcome to IT Knowledge Base. In my earlier video, I have detailed and explained how to configure and establish a site-to-site -site VPN and establish an interconnection between your head office and branches using pair-to-pair -pair shared key mode which is now deprecated nowadays. We are using the latest PFSense Firewall 2.7.0 release in this series. Please note the warning here. The PFSense Firewall 2.7.0 Community Edition and OpenVPN Server has deprecated the use of pair-to-pair -pair shared key mode but you can still use and it will be removed completely in the next release of PFSense Community Edition and OpenVPN. In the PFSense 2.7.0, if you are still using pair-to-pair -pair shared key mode until now and if you unintentionally upgrade to the next release without understanding any entry cases, then you may lose your connectivity and faces serious downtime in dismay. But before they remove this progress entirely, we have to convert all the existing pair-to-pair -pair shared key mode VPNs into pair-to-pair -pair SSL TNS mode and do not configure any new shared key open VPN instances. In this video tutorial, I am going to demonstrate to you how to convert your existing site-to-site -site VPN running on deprecated pair-to-pair -pair shared key into pair-to-pair -pair SSL TNS mode which is the most secure and meets today's security standards. So to reiterate, these are the three parts of the mastering video series about how to configure PFSense site-to-site -site VPN in pair-to-pair -pair shared key mode, which is already covered in my previous video. And similarly, I have provided the link in the description. And now in this part two series, we are seeing practically how to convert into pair-to-pair -pair SSL TLS mode. This is super quick and easy. That's not very difficult but if you follow the accurate orders. And finally, in the next part 3 of this series, we will install and configure our site-to-site -site VPN over an IPsec VPN tunnel from the scratch. Introduction to site-to-site -to -site VPN over pair-to-pair -pair SSL TLS. A site-to-site -site connection using SSL TLS is client-server mode. It's convenient for managing a large number of remote sites, connecting back to a central site in a hub and spoke fashion. When configuring a site-to-site -site open VPN connection using SSL TLS, one firewall will be the server and the other will be the client. Usually the main location will be the server and the remote offices will act as clients. If one location has a static IP address and more bandwidth than the main office, that may be a more desirable location for the server. This style of VPN requires a dedicated subnet for the open VPN interconnection between networks and the subnets on both ends. The figure depicts this layout using 10.1.10.0 30 as a IP version 4 SSL TLS VPN tunnel network. This can be any subnet so long as it does not overlap another subnet currently in use on the network. OpenVPN allocates IP addresses the same way it does for remote access clients. When using a topology style of subnet, each client obtains one IP address in a common subnet. When using a topology style of slash 30, each connecting client gets a flash 30 subnet to interconnect itself with the server. Network diagram. Let's discuss our existing network scenario first. We have identically installed and run PFSense Firewall 2.7.0 Community Edition, the latest version at all of our branches. We also have two sites, head office and branch office, or could have more sites if you deemed required. We have already covered enough technical details about setting up this site to site VPN with pair-to-pair -pair shared key. The task is to, we have to get rid of this deprecated pair-to-pair -pair shared key VPN mode quickly as possible and convert it into pair-to-pair -pair SSL TLS mode with minimal downtime. Converting thus requires some fleetingly delay. Understand the requirements to establish OpenVPN SSL TLS VPN. If you're already running an OpenVPN pair-to-pair -pair shared key, and looking for transitioning into SSL TLS mode, then you have to keep in mind all these essentials and prerequisites. First, you have to create a certificate authority, then create a server certificate. After that, create a user certificate for each remote site signed by the VPN CA, then export certificates, certificate authority, client certificate, and its private key. Create client-specific overrides, which is very important. And last, import certificate authority, user certificate, and its private key into branch office or open VPN client running in the PFSense firewall. All right, we are now ready to convert the existing peer-to-peer -peer shared key VPN to SSL TLS mode. Now let's jump back to our head office primary PFSense firewall site first. Log into your head office PFSense firewall. To create a certificate authority, 
navigate to system certificates and click on certificate authority tab click add to create a new certificate authority enter the required settings as follows descriptive name i would prefer to write as to a ca it certainly matched and looks relevant in the method select create an internal certificate authority randomized serial should be checked key type rsa 2048 or higher digest algorithm sha256 or higher is fine lifetime days 3650 is fine common name s to s c a i would prefer to use the same descriptive name here subject component field the remaining fields are optional but can be set to reflect the location of the c a now click on save next create a server certificate signed by the bpn c a click on certificate step click add to create a new certificate enter the settings as follow method select create an internal certificate descriptive name or whatever you like to write but should be relevant to understand the purpose i would prefer to write server a certificate authority select our certificate authority as to as ca which we have created earlier rsa key rsa 2048 or higher is fine digest algorithm sha256 is also fine lifetime or days enter the days for certificate life i would prefer to write 398 which is suitable please note some current operating systems and software limited server certificates to a maximum life of 398 days for security reasons clients on these platform may reject a server certificate with a longer lifetime now enter the common name i would prefer to use the same descriptive name here subject component fields the fields contain data copied from the certificate authority and are optional but can be set to reflect the location of the servers certificate type This setting is critical. Do not forget to set this value. Select server certificate. Alternative names. This is optional and extra entries if needed specify alternate ways to identify the server. This can be left blank if the certificate will only be used by OpenVPN. Otherwise add fields with additional information such as alternate host names, static IP addresses and so on which are relevant to this server. Now click on save. Now create a client or user certificate for each remote site signed by the VPN CA. Click add to create a new certificate. Enter the settings as follows. In the method select create an internal certificate. Descriptive name or whatever you like to write but should be relevant to understand the purpose. I would prefer to write client B. Certificate authority select our certificate authority as to as CA which we have created earlier. key type rsa2048 or higher is fine digest algorithm sha256 is fine lifetime days 3650 but i would prefer to go with one year but in this example leave it to default common name i would prefer to use the same descriptive name subject component fields the field contain data copied from the certificate authority and are optional but can be set to reflect the location of the client certificate type this setting is critical do not forget to set this value select user certificate because this is for user side in the alternative names this is optional and extra entries if needed specify alternate ways to identify the server this can be left blank if the certificate will only be used by open vpn otherwise add fields with additional information such as alternate host name static ip address and so on which are relevant to this server now click on save Now export the certificates and private keys which the client requires when connecting to the OpenVPN server. Navigate to Certificate Authority tab, find your right certificate authority and click to export its certificate. Navigate to Certificate tab, find the user's or client certificate and click to export the certificate. Follow the same if we have other certificates for clients, and now click to export the private key for the client certificate. For the client side, we have required two things: one is certificate and its private key. Now configure the OpenVPN server instance. Navigate to VPN. Click on OpenVPN. Now click on Server tab. Click on Add to create a new server. 
or add it to simply convert to SSL TLS mode. Use values appropriate for this network or the default if unsure. We have already configured this VPN server earlier, so we will remain unchanged in most of the settings. Description looks fine. In the server mode, we simply require to change it to peer-to-peer -to -peer SSL TLS. Protocol looks fine in WAR interface, interface, local port, everything looks pretty fine. We scroll a bit down. Peer-to-peer -peer certificate authority. Select the CA created earlier at the beginning of this process, which is S2S CA. Pair certificate revocation list. Select a CRL for the CA if one exists or leave it default. In the server certificate, select the server certificate created at the beginning of this process, which is server A. Scroll down a bit. Now click on save. Now add client specific overrides for each client side. These tie a client subnet to a particular certificate, so OpenVPN can properly route a subnet to the correct side. Click on the client specific override tab. Click add to create a new override. Type a descriptive name. I would prefer to write client B. In the common name, I would prefer to use the same as descriptive name, client B. Server list. Select the servers that will utilize this override. When no servers are selected, the override will apply to all servers. Then we just have to provide here client land subnet. IP version 4 remote network should type here client B land subnet, which is 10.0.30.0/24. Please note this field set up the internal route. Now scroll all the way down and click on save. Add an override for the second side if you have one. Next, add a firewall root for the WAN interface which allows access to the OpenVPN server. Navigate to firewall, click on rules, and click on WAN tab. We have already created it in our earlier video in configuring side-to-side peer-to-peer shared key VPN. So we are not going to add or alter any rules here. Leave it default. Now add a tunnel traffic. Add a rule to the OpenVPN tab to pass traffic over the VPN from the client side, from the client side LAN to the server side LAN. This can be an allow all style rule or a set of stricter rules. This example allows all traffic to use this rule. Click on OpenVPN tab. We have already created it in configuring side-to-side peer-to-peer shared key VPN. So we are not going to add or alter any rules here. Here we have completed our server-side configuration. Now switch on to our branch office or client side. Configuring SSL TLS on client side. This is our branch office side. Here we have to import the certificate authority or CA certificate along with the client certificate and its private key, which we exported earlier. I have already copied all the required files in the download folder to save time. Import these items one by one at Certificate Manager. First import the Certificate Authority, navigate to System, click on Certificates and Certificate Authority tab. Click Add to create a new Certificate Authority. Enter the settings as follows. Descriptive name as to as CA. Again, I would prefer to write it certainly matched and looked relevant. Choose the method, import an existing certificate authority. In the certificate data, open the certificate authority certificate file in a text editor on the client PC. Select all of the text and copy it to the clipboard. Then paste it into this field. and click on save. Next, import the client certificate. Click on certificates tab. Click add to create a new certificate. Enter the settings as follows. Select method, import an existing certificate. Descriptive name, write client B. Because this is our PFSense client or branch office site and we have generated the certificate with the same name. Certificate type, leave the default, x.509 PEM is fine. Certificate data, open the client certificate file in a text editor on the client PC. Select all of the text and copy it to the clipboard. Then paste it into this field.
private key data. Now open the client certificate private key in a text editor on the client PC. Select all of the text and paste it into this field. Now click on save. Now after importing the certificates, create the OpenVPN client. Navigate to VPN. Click on OpenVPN. And in the client tab. We have already configured it earlier. And now click on edit the existing OpenVPN client. And here we are required to change the relevant fields to establish an SSL TLS VPN connection. Description is fine. Server mode, change to peer-to-peer -peer SSL TLS. Device mode, layer 3 tunnel mode is fine. Protocol UDP on IB version 4 only is fine. Interface should be set to your WAN. The server host or address is already pointed to our PFSense head office. The public IP address or hostname of the OpenVPN server. Server port is fine, 1194. Every setting looks fine and required no changes except the few. Now select the Pair Certificate Authority. The CA imported at the beginning of this process, select S2S CA. Choose the client certificate. In our case, it's client B. Imported at the beginning of this process. Now click on Save. Now add an open VPN tunnel rule to flow the traffic. Navigate to firewall, click on rules, and then click on open VPN tab. And we have already created this rule in my earlier video, so we will leave it as it is unchanged. And now test the connection. The configuration is now completed. The open VPN client instance automatically starts when created, so it should already be attempted to connect at this point. And if the connection is correct, it will be connected. Head to status and click on open VPN. You should see if everything went well, then a connection should be established. You will see a similar picture on the head office PFSense firewall. Back on head office PFSense firewall, head to status and click on open VPN. And it also established a connection. Try to ping across to the remote end LAN to verify a connectivity. Now open the terminal to ping your branch office. Yes, it's working. You could also do a trace path. And it shows our tunnel gateway here, which means our side-to-side -side VPN is working fine from the head office to the branch office. Now jump back to our branch office, open a terminal to ping your head office. Ping 10.0.20.10. It's working. Also do our trace path. And it also shows our tunnel gateway, which means our side-to-side -side VPN is working fine from the branch office to the head office. Now let's conclude the stuff. And that's it. That should give you a good idea of how to transition your running side-to-side -side VPN on pair-to-pair -pair shared key mode into SSL TLS VPN tunnel in PFSense 2.7.0 release. And it also should work in the previous version. And if you wanted to know how to create and configure a side-to-side -side VPN on pair-to-pair -pair shared key mode, then watch my earlier video. I have also provided the URL in the description. And sure enough, you can see that a connection is established. We have successfully converted. In the next, the final part 3 of this series, we will configure an IPsec VPN tunnel from scratch just to show you that we could establish a side-to-side -side VPN tunnel over the IPsec tunnel. Alright, that is all for the now. If you want to see more awesome training content, make sure you click that subscribe button. Click it so you don't miss it. Or if you have any issues or questions, you can reach out to me and I'd be happy to help you out. Thank you.